Hey guys, I'm Saba Tahir, author of An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, and now a Reaper at the Gates. Penguin Teen has challenged me to recap uh, Helene Aquila's story as fast as possible, as if they're not 450 pages each. Thanks guys, but let's give it a try. We meet fierce, determined, powerful Helene Aquila, student at Blackcliff Academy, which is maybe not the nicest place. It's a school that trains elite masks, the military of the marshals. Helene is the only woman at the school, which just causes a little bit of negative attention for her. Why? Because boys are idiots. The masks are named for their silver masks, which meld to their face and which Helene wears with great pride. Helene is best friends with Elias Vitorius, and together they are preparing for their final days at Blackcliff. Yay! She almost catches him in preparation to escape, but decides not to raise the issue because, well, let's just say she has complicated feelings about him. The Augurs, immortal beings who founded the school and who share prophecies, announce the Trials, a series of tests that will determine the next emperor and his second-in-command, the Bloodstrike. They select aspirants for the Trials, Helene, along with Elias, and fellow students Zach and his twin brother Marcus. Helene loves Zach and Marcus. She thinks they're the best. No, I'm kidding. They suck. They're horrible. Marcus is a cruel and violent boy who constantly harasses Helene and won't leave her alone. During the first trial, one of courage, Helene is severely injured and almost killed by Marcus and Zack, who are naturally cheating. Why? Because they suck. Elias rescues Helene and helps them avoid being executed, and their underlying chemistry remains. In the second trial, Helene and Elias team up, but during a battle with supernatural creatures, Elias is violently attacked. Helene, fearing his death, does whatever she can to save him, and in the process discovers she has a strange healing power. But she doesn't want to tell anyone about it because witchcraft isn't really viewed very nicely in the Empire. Later, Helene realizes Elias is feeling a growing attraction to slave girl Laia, and she's furious! She cannot understand why her best friend is risking his life for a scholar girl. And while she feels sadness for scholars, she does not see them as equal to Marshall's. It also hurts her personally because, well, she's kind of been in love with her best friend for years and was hoping he would feel the same one day. While sparring with each other, Helene and Elias share a moment that almost leads to a kiss. Almost so close, Helene. But then when they hear Laia's screams, their moment is interrupted. Laia has been attacked by the evil Marcus and is gravely wounded. Elias begs Helene to use her new powers to heal Laia, and despite her hatred for the girl, she can't resist Elias, and she heals Laia, helping to save her life. In the third trial, the four aspirants are given a small group of soldiers each and told to fight to the death in two rounds. Helene immediately springs into battle, but Elias refuses to fight her. However, after watching his friends die because of his indecision, he attacks Helene and strikes her in an intended killing blow. It is revealed, though, that she is wearing special armor from the Augurs to protect her. Ahead of the fourth trial, Helene learns that Marcus killed his own twin brother, Zack, in their battle round, and this, combined with the loss of their friends, has shaken her. She is fearful that she's going to end up second in command to a dangerously violent and extra horrible Marcus. The fourth trial has the commandant, the headmaster of the school, and also Elias' mother, place the slave girl, Laia, into the battle, knowing that her son's attachment will affect his fighting skills. The trial is simply to kill Laia and claim victory. Helene, knowing she doesn't want the responsibility of Empress, knocks out Marcus and begs Elias to kill Laia and take the crown, making her his blood strike and second in command. As the two argue, though, Marcus awakens, surprise, and kills Laia, claiming the role of Emperor and deeming Helene his second in command and giving her the title of Bloodstrike, a role she is unable to reject lest she be killed. Elias is tossed into jail and his execution is set for the morning. The following morning, a not dead Laia rescues Elias from the execution. When they run into Helene, she confesses to working with the Augurs in an attempt to save Elias' life. He removes his mask, gives it to her, and she lets them escape the burning Blackcliff Academy before the other masks can attack. So, into Torch we go. <music> Helene is being tortured by Mask Harper, punishment for her letting Elias and Laia go. But Helene's father, who is awesome, eventually makes a deal for his family to support Marcus's rule, and this allows Helene to return to her role as Marcus's second, the Bloodstrike. Helene is ordered by Marcus to track down Elias and kill him. Easy enough. 
one of the augurs, Cain, appears to her and tells her this is her destiny, to save the Empire. It's something she must do. Paired with Mask Harper, a suspected spy of the Commandant, Helene sets out to track Elias down. Helene learns that Marcus is set to marry her sister, Hannah, as part of her father's deal to free her. Ugh. Helene witnesses the Commandant's conversation with the Nightbringer, a djinn and our big baddie, and then the Nightbringer confronts Helene. Cook, a former slave in the Commandant's house who is suspected of helping Elias and Lia escape, returns to give Helene a lead on their whereabouts, but she also gives some vague clues about her time as a resistance fighter. Helene, along with the ever-present Harper and other soldier friends, realizes that Elias is heading to Noor and they set off to capture him. In Noor, there are many tribes and Helene struggles to find Elias in the crowded city. After capturing his adoptive tribal mother, Mamie Rila, Helene releases her, hoping to track Mamie back to Elias, but instead, Mamie creates a riot. In the chaos and the anger, Helene is attacked by furious tribespeople, and Elias suddenly appears, dragging her to safety. Helene and Elias share tense words, and Elias talks of the last time that they'll see each other, which confuses Helene because she doesn't know he's dying. Helene is still unable to face killing him, so she lets him go. Emperor Marcus is furious with Helene, and the Commandant uses Helene's failure to attempt to maneuver herself into a more powerful position. Helene, in the meantime, is trying to get back on Marcus's good side, so she takes out a bunch of his enemies, but he still warns her that her family will be next if she fails to capture Elias. Helene is devastated by the choice that is before her. Either she kills Elias or she lets Marcus kill her family. No, that sucks. The Augur Cain visits her again, telling her that she will be unmade by her choice, something that she interprets to mean that she is destined to kill Elias. An injured cook reappears. She will give Helene Elias' location if Helene agrees to heal her. Helene learns that Elias is in Kof prison. Not a nice place. Helene heads to the prison where she encounters the Warden, who reveals that he has actually captured Elias. By the way, the Warden is the worst person ever. Later, Helene and her mass, including Harper, find Lya. Lya reveals to Helene that on her travels, she encountered an army hiding in a valley, and that's at odds with reports that the Commandant has been giving to Helene, and Helene starts to sense that something is very wrong. Helene spies on the Commandant and realizes that both the Commandant and the Warden of Koch Prison are working for the Nightbringer in their attempt to overthrow Emperor Marcus and take control. And you know that hidden army? That's the Commandant's. Helene worries that Mask Harper will share her knowledge with the Commandant, but he confesses that while he was once sent to kill Helene, his allegiances have changed. Helene decides to stop the Commandant's attempt to murder Marcus instead of tracking down Elias, hoping to win the Emperor's favor. Arriving back to Marcus, whose mental state is clearly deteriorating, she attempts to warn him of the Commandant's plan, but the Commandant has already arrived and manages to convince Marcus of Helene's incompetence. Marcus is enraged and he sentences Helene's family to death. Marcus kills Helene's family, but shows mercy by marrying her sister Olivia. Marcus also secretly commands that Helene murder the Commandant, revealing that he knew the Commandant's plan to overthrow him all along. A month after her family is murdered, Helene discovers that Mask Harper is Elias' half-brother through their father. What? Helene visits Livia, who is now married to Marcus. Ugh. Livia calls her sister Helene, but Helene makes it clear she is now the Bloodshrike, and her destiny is set for a Reaper at the Gates. <laughs>